Hi guys, it's Mina. Welcome back. And I want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. I think that's when you will be seeing this video. So for Christmas, I'm going to tell you a little story. We're going to be doing the Constellation Sagittarius tonight. And the story is quite intricate. It's kind of a doozy. <laughs> so this is a 36 by 36 canvas that I had poured on a couple of days ago. And when I started pouring, there was no wind. <laughs> Almost immediately, as soon as the cameras were rolling, scales started blowing <laughs> and kind of set up my base coat and things didn't go as I wanted and it didn't get tilted the right way. So we're going to pour over this canvas again and I'm going to show you the colors that I'm using tonight because they're really, really beautiful. Uh, the first one I'm using, I'll show you the consistency on this one. This is Golden's Nickel Azo Gold. And it's just, it's such a pretty color. It's kind of like persimmon, like a dark tangerine. So my consistency is fairly thick. It's leaving a mound on a mound on a mound before it disappears, okay? The next one we have is Golden's Turquoise Thalo. Gorgeous color. And our Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in 24 karat gold. This one is also Golden's. This is green gold. And this one is a combination of Amsterdam Naples Yellow mixed with some Satin Enamels in Neutral Beige. And I think I added a squirt of um, Sargent's Pearl Medium to that one also. So those two are a flow extender. They're the same as this one, but they are thinned out. So the game plan is to do a couple of ring pours here and then do a flow extender. And then we're going to spin it out because HOA has been playing with the spinner again. And he has created this magnificent thing that can spin a 36 by 36 canvas. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to tell you the story of Sagittarius first before I start pouring because otherwise I won't be able to remember all of it. So like I said, it's a little bit convoluted. Sagittarius is between November 22nd and December 21st. That is the archer. So it's a centaur usually or a satyr holding a bow and arrow and firing at the heart of Scorpion. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. Um, the actual story is about, I've heard two stories. Okay, my daughter told me one story first, and then I was doing some research and realized that that was a common misconception. So the real story of Sagittarius is the story of Crotus. And Crotus was a satyr. He was the son of Pam and Ephimides, I believe, or Euphimides. And he was one of the teachers, essentially, of the Muses, the nine daughters of Zeus. And he had great intellect and a wonderful appreciation for the arts and science. And he, he took care of the muses and appreciated their talents. And actually, it's really cute. He invented applause, or clapping, <laughs> that we do now. Because when the muses were singing, he would just get so delighted that he would clap his hands. And he actually invented applause, which the muses really appreciated. Rather than shouting, yay, or hooray, or whatever, they liked the clapping. So... Sagittarius, <laughs> Crotus actually invented clapping. One of the other things that he is credited as being the inventor of is the bow and arrow, because he was a mighty hunter. And since he had the, the top part of a human with the torso of a man and a head of a man, but he either had the body of a goat or a horse and the legs of a goat or a horse, they could run really fast. And he was credited as being a great hunter. So the, okay, so the interesting story about Crotus is that as he was with the teachers of the muses, he, he, um, they really cared for him and they loved him very much and they asked Zeus to immortalize him in the heavens, which he did. So the other story, that's the confusing one, involves Chiron, who was a centaur. Now, Crotus was a satyr, a satyr with <laughs> two goat legs and Chiron was a centaur with four legs, the body of a horse. So Chiron, just like Crotus, which is probably why they're confused, was very intelligent because most of the time centaurs and satyrs were not, I mean, they were very rowdy, very bawdy. <laughs> they were kind of wild and liked to party a lot. And they didn't really have a lot of respect for authority. And they usually weren't very good to humans. Actually, they could be kind of brutal and, and very savage towards humans. But Chiron and Crotus were very educated and they were polite and kind to humans. And as a result of that, they had this relationship with humans and with the gods. Those two specifically, actually, Chiron was credited with being a teacher for Heracles and for Jason from Jason and the Golden Fleece. So the story of Chiron actually involves Heracles. They were out hunting together and 
Accidentally, Heracles shot Chiron with one of his poison arrows. Now, Chiron was an immortal and couldn't really die, but the poison arrow was, was really hurting him and, and really paining him a lot. So Heracles said, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to find a way to help you. And he went off searching for a solution, and he came across Prometheus. So Prometheus was one of the Titans, and he is actually credited as bringing fire to humans. But um, Zeus wasn't real happy about that. <laughs> so he created Pandora and her magical box, the jar that she carried, and sent her to Earth as a punishment for human beings. And of course, Pandora's curiosity won out, and she opened the jar and released hatred and hard work and, and all of these things. Remember, in Virgo's Hope, we talked about this. And everything eventually, the only thing left on Earth was hope, which was Virgo's Hope. Anyway, so... Prometheus was kind of a naughty dude, and Zeus, to punish him, this is a little bit gruesome, um, nailed him to a mountain and had an eagle come and eat his liver every single day. And the liver, because he was kind of immortal, grew back almost instantly and replenished itself, so the eagle just kept torturing him every single day. So anyway, Heracles sees Prometheus and his liver being eaten by this angry eagle and realizes and says to him, what's wrong? Why can't you just leave? And he says, I can't leave until anybody takes my place. So Heracles sees a possibility and goes to Chiron and says, you know, you could go take Prometheus's place and then you would probably die. <laughs> so Chiron agrees and takes Prometheus, asks Zeus if he can take Prometheus's place. And he does, and Prometheus is freed, and Chiron eventually dies, and his soul is transported up to the heavens by Zeus and immortalized in the constellation Sagittarius. So, it's a pretty <laughs> convoluted story. And I guess those two, Crotus and Chiron, get confused a lot because they were both intelligent and teachers and taught a lot of things, and they were both very good with the bow and arrow. So, there's a little bit of confusion, but ultimately, you know, it's the same message in both of these. Um, I don't know, it's just an interesting story. So we'll talk more about some Sagittarius traits in a bit, but let's get started on our pour. So I have a little bit of bad news for you guys. My beloved mug, my cup, juggy. Um, I was washing it and it fell and it finally broke. So there's a big hole in it now. So thank you for a nice year of wonderful service, but that one's going bye-bye. So tonight what we're going to do is pour out of some of these plain 16-ounce cups, which is actually okay with me, and I am sad, but I'd rather have a broken cup than a broken leg, which I had before from washing the cups. So <laughs> we're going to go with the plastic cups that I don't have to wash for tonight. So we're using these 16-ounce plastic ones, and I'm actually going to layer two of them at the same time. For this size canvas, a 36 by 36 inch gallery wrap canvas, we need about 40 ounces of paint. So each of these holds 16 ounces to here and about 20 ounces if we get closer to the top. So we might be okay with two of these. We, if we need a third one, I have one standing by. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's put down a napkin so we don't get any paint on our painting um, yet. Okay, so. What are we going to do here? We're going to start with the Nicolazzo gold. Actually, I'm going to start with a tiny bit of gold in the center first. Just a little bit. That's the one I'm going to pour first. Or last. Okay, we'll figure it out. Then we're going to come in with the Nicolazzo gold now. Okay. And now we're going to use some of this Naples yellow beigey color, sort of like Buff Titan. Very pretty. And now we're going to come in here with our turquoise. And now we're going to use the green gold from Goldens. And this is such an interesting color too. Like, looking at this in the cup, I'm not actually crazy about it, but something magical happens when you put this next to that turquoise. It's just, it's an incredible thing. So, 
Hopefully we'll get to see that a little bit more gold in there. Now I'm going to put another shot of the cream color. Because I feel like lately I've been doing a lot of pours that had a lot of darker colors. And sometimes I feel like I'm getting some muted tones, which I don't want very much. So nickel has a gold again. And what did we do after that? We did the cream. No. All right, so we'll put a little bit of that in. Now we're going to go back to the turquoise again. And the green gold. And some gold. come back to the Nicolazzo one more time. Okay. All right. So those are ready to go. Let's pick that up. That's cool. I saw Manon Petit do that. That was awesome. Thank you, Madon. That was a great idea. Okay. So let's put a little pot of gold in the center. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put some of this thinned out flow extender down first for us to pour into. And now we're going to pour up. Are you ready, husband of awesomeness? Aye, my lass, as you wish. All right, here we go. I'm going to do a ring pour. Turn the canvas. <laughs> this one's big. <laughs> okay. Put a little bit in that one. I'm gonna put a little bit of this around here. I don't want it going over itself. That's really pretty, she said as she poured more paint on top of it. <laughs> Are you ready, darling? I am, nice. I breathed for that last <laughs> I know you didn't. <laughs> okay, that's the thick one. So these are the thin ones. You guys saw Scorpio. You know how important it is to get the consistency right. <laughs> okay. This is looking really cool though. I'm very happy about this. We need another cup, do you? Doesn't look like it. Especially with the flow extender. Move it into the middle. 
Okay, <laughs> are you ready? Aye. Yeah, it's actually looking pretty good and there's some really cool cells in there. So let's torch this real quick. I do want to put more clove extender around there, which is great because I have another cup right here. This one seems a touch thick. Let's bring it up. My paint is all mixed with Liquitex gloss medium and the paint and Flotrol. thicker consistency. We need it for our edges and corners. Are you ready? great. I just want to scoot this down a little bit because I don't want to lose any of it yet. It's looking pretty good so far though. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. You just can't resist tilting it. Well, I want it to be in the right place. I know, I know. You can't resist giving me a hard time, can you? <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> okay, that's cool. Let's take a little bit of this paint here and just stick it in there. Okay, 
There's a lot of really cool cells happening here. Whip it good. One more time, and then I think I'm just gonna fill in the edges. <laughs> this is looking pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and thin out the rest of my Floyd Stender a little bit, and then we're gonna put this on the edges and maybe we'll give it one more spin. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this along here. No, I still feel that's way too thick still. Somebody had said something really interesting once about consistency, and they said if you're having trouble telling by looking at it, try stirring it with your eyes closed and you can feel the resistance and you'll get to know, you know, how thick or how thin. Alright, so that's that covered. down a bit before we spin it out more. This way just a touch. Wow, that contraption is pretty heavy. <laughs> okay. So now I feel like the paint is centered more over there instead of up in this corner. All right. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a spin. Paint is flying, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a good day. That looks pretty cool. Except I'm not crazy about that bald edge down there. So we're going to take this down this way just a touch. Until we go over that edge. Yeah, it's moving nice and slow, which is awesome. It means there's not a lot of paint on here. There's not too much paint. They're getting close to the edge. <laughs> Patience, my love. Uh, it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, kind of rush part. Yeah, right. All right, let's spin it again. Yeah, the only thing that I'm not completely happy about is those two colors of flow extender were slightly different. So I'm going to take the darker one. Does it look okay? So I'm just going to go near the edge with this second color. I'm going to spin this one more time just to get some of the extra off the edges. Okay, now composition wise, the only thing I want to do is take it back down that way just a touch because I love these lines down here at the bottom. And I want to open them up just a bit. You can go back this way just a little too. More jelly bean shaped than anything else. Free Shavaka, dude. 
Another avocado. <laughs> I've been painting avocados lately. Okay. I think that's awesome. I'm going to wipe my hands and we're going to torch it one more time. And then we're actually going to be done. Because I really like this a lot. Especially that Nicolazzo gold in the center is just amazing right in here. That's so pretty against that green gold and that turquoise. I love this. This is really pretty. These are pretty. Yeah, very cool. Let's start it again. Fire, fire, fire. So let's just let this develop for a minute and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Sagittarius and some of their traits. Um, I think that the thing that stands out most for me is that Sagittarius are usually hilarious people. They're really, really funny with a kind of a wicked <laughs> sense of humor. But uh, they're very spontaneous and they like to have a good time. They're usually up for anything. They appreciate the arts and sciences and always appreciate cultural experiences. Um, I think one of the research things I was reading said they're always willing to help you go burn down your ex's house. <laughs> Just made me laugh. You know, but it's it's that Sagittarius humor, you know, can be wicked funny. So they're really cool people, though. They're very loyal. They're very optimistic. Um, you know, they're open-minded. Um, sometimes they can get a little bit opinionated and start talking and maybe not have as much research as they should. <laughs> it's funny because my best friends throughout most of my life have usually been Sagittarius. <laughs> but they're very sweet people, very loving, very loyal, very kind, optimistic. They work really hard, great leadership skills. Um, one of the other things I was reading was talking about how Sagittarius puts people together in relationships that normally probably wouldn't happen. So they introduce really cool people to each other in order to sort of like, they stir the pot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they stir the pot. Let's let's leave it at that. <laughs> so this turned out really awesome. I'm very happy with it. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. And uh, take care of each other, huh? Be safe. We love you so much. Thank you all for being here with us. This has been an awesome year. HOA and I appreciate you guys. We will see you when this is dry. Okay, so this is a few days later. And this one is dry now. I didn't shoot it outside for this part because it's been raining and been kind of dark. But it is dried and it dried really, really beautifully. And you can see that shine on there. Sorry, I do have a flash on because it's kind of dark in here. But it looks really cool. I love these lines. I really like that spinning out the ring pours. This one is a 36 by 36 gallery wrap canvas. See that really pretty turquoise thalo and the golden's green gold and the nickel azo gold and of course our 24 karat. And we have that pretty cream color that's up there on the corners. Such a pretty shine. This is the Liquitex gloss medium and Floetrol. Almost looks like a bird of paradise right there or a flame. Pretty cool, so this one was Sagittarius. The story of Crotus, the satyr, who was the beloved teacher of the muses, the nine daughters of Zeus. And they asked him to immortalize him in the heavens, and he did. Pretty cool stuff. So, thank you guys so much for being with us, and we wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. HOA and I are busy getting everything set up and getting everything ready, and uh, don't forget to feed your Tomties. You gotta feed them on Christmas Eve, otherwise they make mischief all year, so they're there eating their porridge. <laughs> this was awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. And I will see you very, very soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.